Today I'm going to be talking about using the fundamental theorem of algebra, and this is day two of chapter five, section six. So we're moving on to the second part of 5.6. This time we're going to write a polynomial function f of least degree that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of one, and the given zeros. Now with this one, it's very similar to what we've done before, but instead of having square roots, we have an imaginary number. But the same rule applies to using its conjugate. So we have two and five minus i, so we have to have a five plus i. We have to have the conjugate of imaginary numbers as well. So we're going to do the same process right down in factored form. So we have the f of x is equal to x minus 2 times x minus 5 minus i times x minus 5 plus i. And now same as before, we're going to distribute that negative. So we get x minus 2 times x minus 5 plus i times x minus 5 minus i. Once we distribute that negative, we can regroup, and now we have conjugates, and now it's much easier to multiply those. So we now have x minus 2 times x minus 5 squared. Now be careful when we multiply our i's. Remember, i times i is i squared, which is a negative 1. So off to the side, I'm going to show you this. If we multiply i times a negative i. That's going to become a negative i squared. Well, i squared is a negative 1, so that becomes a positive 1. So be very careful when multiplying those because we can make a small sign error, which we don't want to do. So this is going to be a plus 1 for that. Now we can multiply out our binomial. So this is going to be x minus 2 times x squared minus 10x plus 25 plus 1. Simplify that out. And we get x squared minus 10x plus 26. We now can use our box method, like before. We get x minus 2, x squared minus 10x, 26 x cubed minus 10x squared, 26x, negative 2x squared, 20x, and then a negative 52. Okay? So our final answer for this, for the function, is going to be the f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12x squared plus 46x minus 52. Very similar to what we've been doing before. So let's do another example. Okay. Now I have a 3i and a 2 minus i. Even though we just have two of these, they're both imaginary numbers and we have to use the conjugates for both. The conjugate of a positive 3i is a negative 3i and the conjugate of 2 minus i is 2 plus i. So we have four of these. So now we're going to write them in factored form. So we have x plus 3i, x minus 3i, x minus 2 minus i, and x minus 2 plus i. Okay. We can FOIL the x plus 3i and the x minus 3i, and those are conjugates. So all we're going to get for this one is x squared, and be careful, 3i times a negative 3i is a positive 9. Be careful with that one and multiplying the i's. Remember that i times i is a negative 1. Okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute that negative. So it's x minus 2 plus i and x minus 2 minus i. We can regroup, so we have a conjugate now. And this is going to be x squared plus 9 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. Be careful when multiplying. We can now multiply x 
minus 2 squared to be x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 1. Simplify x squared plus 9, x squared minus 4x plus 5. We are now ready to use our box method. We have x squared and a positive 9, x squared minus 4x plus 5. So we're going to have x to the fourth, negative 4x cubed, 5x squared, 9x squared, negative 36x, and 45. So we're going to have the f of x, x to the fourth, minus 4x to the third, plus 14x squared, minus 36x, plus 45. Ah, running out of room there. Okay, so that's that one. Okay. Next up, we have a little bit of a larger one. I wanted to show you one of the, the uh, longer problems. This one, we have 3, 4 plus 2i, and 1 plus the square root of 7. So we've mixed in square roots to this as well. So we have to have a conjugate. So we have to have 4 minus 2i and 1 minus square root of 7. So we're going to write this. f of x is equal to x minus 3 times x minus 4 plus 2i times x minus 4 minus 2i. Then x minus 1 plus the square root of 7 times x minus 1 minus the square root of 7. So this is quite a large one. Okay, so now we're just going to start to distribute those negatives. So we have x minus 3 times x minus 4 minus 2i times x minus 4 plus 2i and then x minus 1 minus the square root of 7 times x minus 1 plus the square root of 7. We can now regroup to make conjugates. So I'll put parentheses here and here. So we now have x minus 3 times x minus 4 squared <laughs> plus 4. Make sure we're multiplying those imaginary numbers correctly. And then x minus 1 squared square root of a negative square root of 7 times positive square root of 7 gives us a negative 7. Make sure we multiply those correctly as well. Now we're going to multiply our binomials. So we get x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 4 and x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 7. Don't forget that one. Now we're going to simplify. We have x minus 3 equals x squared minus 8x plus 20 and x squared minus 2x minus 6. Now, what we have to do is we're going to do two um, we're going to do two box methods for this. I'm going to do the box method first for these two. Let's do this kind of over here so we have some room. So our bro first box method is x and negative 3, x squared, negative 8x, and 20. So I have x cubed, negative 8x squared, 20x. Next one is negative 3x squared, 24x, and a negative 60. Okay, and so we're going to combine like terms and we're going to multiply it by this one. Okay, and what we're going to have for this one is going to be a 3 by 4. Let's see if we can get this in here.
Okay, so our 3 is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 6. And I'm going to bring what's in the red over here. So that's going to be x cubed minus 11x squared, 44x, and negative 60. So we're going to do those. So we're going to get x to the fifth, negative 11x to the fourth, 44x cubed, and negative 60x squared. Now we're going to have a negative 2x to the fourth, 22x to the third, negative 88x squared, and 120x. Be careful with those. Next, we have a negative 6x cubed, 66x squared, negative 264x, and then finally 360. So we're going to combine all of those. This one's quite a, quite a long one. I'll put it at the very top. Put it at the very top. So our final answer for this one is going to be the f of x equals x to the fifth minus 13x to the fourth plus 60x to the third minus 82x squared minus 144x plus 360. And that's our final answer. So that's kind of a big one. It takes a little bit of time. Okay, next up what I'm going to talk about is the Descartes rule of signs. And what the Descartes rule of signs does, it gives us the combinations of possible zeros, of positive, negative, and imaginary zeros. So the rule is, if you have the number of positive real zeros is equal to the number of changes in the sign of the coefficients of f of x, or is less than by an even number. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the sign changes. Okay, so the first one, the leading coefficient is positive, then goes to negative. So that's one sign change. Then negative to positive, that's another, and then positive to negative. So that's three sign changes. And then is less than an even number. So we're going to use two here. That's an even number. So we do three minus two, which is one. So it can be three or one. So we can have either three positive or one positive. Now to find the possible amount of negative real zeros, we're going to plug in a negative x to everything, to all the x's, but we have to simplify first. So a negative x to the sixth is going to become positive. A negative x to the fifth is negative times a negative, so that's a positive. Negative x to the fourth is a positive, so we keep it. Negative x to the third is a negative, times a negative is a positive. Negative x squared is a positive, but we have a negative. And then that's going to be positive 8x minus 8. So we're going to look at the, the sign changes here. We go from positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative. So once again, we have 3 or 1. And what we do is we're going to make a chart. We can have possible positives possible negatives, and possible imaginary. And we're going to do different combinations of each. So we can have three or one positives. So we can have three positives or three negatives. Okay, uh, One positive or three negatives. Three positives or one negative, or one positive and three negatives. So we have to, oh sorry, 1 and 1. So we have to have all different combinations. 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, and 1, 1. So now our highest value here is 6. So it has to add up to 6. 3 plus 3 is 6, so we have no imaginary. 1 plus 3 is 4, so we have 2 imaginary. 3 plus 1 is 4, so we have 2 imaginary. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have 4 imaginary to get a total of 6.